Hello, everybody. Um, we are here again, and today um, I'm with Joseph Amato, director of SBA Nevada, um, and uh, we want to go over how to apply for the SBA disaster loan and as well as the PPP program and walk you through the forms one by one. So I'm now using Chinese to say we today um, can invite Joseph Amato, the director of the Small Business Administration, the Nevada State Administration. 嗯、um, ，那么由他呢来教我们一把手呃手把手的带我们走一下这个怎么样申请 SBA 贷款的这个流程，然后呢，还有关于一些 PPP 的最新事项。刚才我们刚有了一个啊、呃、临时的会议，然后后来我忘录音了，现在已经很晚了，然后我们现在加班准备补充一下。嗯、um, ，So Joseph, do you want to get started first? Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, well, thank you everyone for、uh, joining us again and.、Uh, And adding this recording, so to add to the information we shared with you earlier today,、um, we are going to talk about the two premier SBA programs、um, that are broken into the disaster injury.、Uh, I'm sorry, economic injury disaster loan program and the economic injury disaster loan program advance. 那么 IDO 其实就是我们的这个救助金救助资金的项目，也就是这个嗯、um, economic disaster injury um e c o n o m i c injury disaster loan. Yes, that's、okay. correct.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, it's a tongue twister. So we call it Idle、um, or Idle Advance.、So、we're going to go through the application today, so that you get have a good idea of how to fill out the application. The Idle program has been available for about three weeks, and it、uh, basically allows the borrower, the business, to borrow up to two million dollars.、Um, it's up to a thirty-year amortization, and it's a three point seven five percent interest rate.、Um, the first twelve months of the Uh, idle loan are deferred, so there's no payments for the first 12 months okay. until. Okay. <laughs> um. 那么这个嗯， um, 整这个贷款呢，大概是高达百嗯两两百美元。嗯、um, ，那么我们等于是有两有两个名称，一个是 idle。idle 呢，就是我们现在大家都所谓的这个救助金。idle plus 就是 idle 加。那么就是我们这有一个这个 advance payment。也就是一个提前付款，这个付款是一嗯高达一万美金，那么是在三呃三天之内一般就能够先批准的。嗯，那么这个贷款本身的嗯成熟期是三十年，嗯，利率是百分之三点七五，头十二个月是不用还款的，嗯，等于是在十二个月之后你再开始还款。Okay, so at this point, what we can do is start going through the application for the idle loan program first. 我们现在跟大家 share 一下 screen， 这样的话我们就能够看到嗯。Um, 一步一步，到时候怎么样申请，怎么样填写表格的流程。Okay. Okay, and you'll see in the idle loan application,、um, there are several different things that you have to go through first.、Um, there's disclosures, business information, business owners information, additional information, and summary. 嗯、um, ，从这上面你们可以看到，我们一共有五步。嗯、um, ，从第一步是嗯、um, 说明，然后第二步是填写关于你的商你的商业的任何情况。然后接下来就是按照他们的这个啊、uh, 网站的指挥，一步一步往下走。整个的过程也就是从也就是十到十五分钟左右。所以说呢，嗯、um, ，其实你自己就是稍微懂有一点英文背景的话，嗯，能够把这个填写出来完全没有问题。When you're filling out the application, it's first going to ask you to choose one of these following things. Most of you are going to choose applicant is a business with no more than 500 employees, or Applicant is an individual who operates as a sole proprietorship, with or without employees, or as an independent contractor. Um, 第一个就是先选择你公司的性质。你公司的性质，这个选择的时候要很注意，因为有，因为它可能会会带你到两个不同的页面去。如果呢，你的选择的公司是低于五百个员工，呃，五百名员工以以下，那么你选第一项。第二项呢，就是如果你是个体户，然后呢，或者是说是 sole pro, um proprietorship。然后最后一个呢，另外还有一个是非盈利组织。如果你是非盈利组织的话，那么你就一定要选这个关于这个最后，嗯，最后一项是非盈利非盈利的 non non profit organization。你比如说，就像你如果是一个教堂啊，或者是其他的一些非盈利机构、慈善机构，你都要选这一项。然后这三种不同的选项会带你分别到三个不同的网页去申请，然后也会让你填不同的信息。所以这方面选的时候，你们一定要特殊留心。And as Shannon has said, if you're not one of these two, most likely you could be a private nonprofit organization, which also is eligible for idle funding. When you go back to the lower ends, you're going to have to check off each one of these.
So when you check off all these, you'll see the box goes from a light blue to a dark blue, and that allows you to move forward to the next screen. When you go to the next screen, it's going to ask for business information. And a lot of you have said, asked the same thing. What is the business legal name? So that's the name of the business that you will see. And that will be normally the name that you see on your tax returns um, when you register to pay taxes for your business. So that'll be the same name. Okay, and then your trade name could either, it's normally what your nickname or what your, could also be just the same name, but you have to fill in the box. So you both have to, when you, the bar is red, you have to fill it in. So we had to fill in a name, so we put in just the identical name. So the next number you're going to put in is your tax ID number that's usually seen on your tax return. Or if you're a sole proprietor, you'll put your social security number. So next you pick organization. In this case, I'm an LLC, so I'm going to pick LLC, but you can see there's a diff all difference. If you're a non-profit, you'd hit yes here, but in this case, we're going to hit no. If you're a franchise, you'd hit yes. In this case, we're going to hit no. So when we hit the yes, 那么如果你是有连锁店的话，它下面可能会问你一些关于你连锁店的信息。So you see the red bar. So we have to put the gross revenue for the business from the previous year. In this case，我们现在假定，我们现在从网上搜索了一个 tax return. 那么，那么对应的这个有一个在第 one A, right? Yes, it's gross. Gross receipt of sales. 嗯，这个呢，这个上面的这个名字，名字就是你需要填到。gross revenue so here we'll put months. we'll put 9.2 million right to meet to meet what's on the tax returns from last year Correct. and cost of goods sold cost of goods sold schedule a cost of goods it's a zero because there's no cost of goods sold but you have to put something so you basically put the zero there to turn it green. Then all these other questions here are not usually for a small business. Um, and normally what we'll do is just basically leave these blank. If there's specific questions you have about these and you think they apply to you, you can just give us a WeChat and let us know and we'll answer your question. Um, uh, here we'll put our everything turned red to green when we put our address in. Oh, yeah, for the rental properties, this is not a, this is mostly done for natural disasters. It's part of their application. This is an economic disaster. So we're not dealing with landlords or investors or people that lost property. We're dealing only with economic disasters. And this is not for investors or people involved in speculative real estate, so this will not be answered. 那么对于这个空格来说的话呢，嗯，如果您是投资商或者是是一个嗯地主的话呢，这个投资金呃不，这个救助金对您是无效的。Okay, as you go down further, it's going to ask for your business address. We have pre-filled this in, so we just made up an address. It asks for your business phone number, an alternate phone number if you have it. So sometimes you'll put your business phone in here. And then your well, it's not letting us do it. Yeah, you, uh, you don't, yeah. Okay, here you go. And then we'll just make up numbers. All right. And now it's turned to green. And then you put your business email in here. In case, this case, I put my email. When the business was established, again, it's red, so you have to put it in. And we're just going to say 2001. And we, the current owner, since. So we bought it from them. And then your business activity. In this case, we'll do a construction contractor, but you can see it runs, it basically gives you a lot of different things to pull from. Right. And if you don't, if you don't have anything in here, um, or if your business isn't in here, um, I believe you can almost everything is covered. So yeah, I'm not sure anything's much everything here. So and then it's gonna ask for more detail. So we said construction contract on this H A C. And then the second the, oh, you can see here this is wrong, so we're gonna go zero one. No, that's two thousand one. Yeah, zero one, two thousand one. Okay. Number of employees. Then we go down to number of employees, and let's just say for the heck of it, we're going to do ten employees. Okay. You can see that the minute we did that, 
the box went from light blue from gray to yeah blue. To, and that means blue. that we can go to the next screen right so now you're getting business owner information the thing here on top is the most important thing if your business is completely owned by you then you're the business owner or agent if it's owned by you and other partners you could see that you can add other people to it on the bottom and in this case if your business is owned by another company and yourself you basically put that in you hit yes and then you add the business information up top and then you add the owner information 这个呢就是如果是你的公司是由其他的母公司拥有持有的话或者是你有一个母公司占有一定的股份那么你这上面一定要选 going to basically just put myself as um, as you can see here as my name as the owner as the owner Okay, I put my phone number in, and I'm going to put myself as the owner from the drop-down box. And you see everything goes from red to green. And for this, because we did it as a 50-50 a before, but this way, to make it a little bit simpler, I'm just going to put myself as 100% owner. And I'll show you down how we do it. Pre-populate my Social Security number, which is not mine, and it's not letting me do it, so we'll just make it up. They don't let you type in. They don't let you paste them. Okay, and then my birth date is... I was born after I started the company, and then my birthday is New York, New York. Like that didn't go there either. And I'm New York, New York, and now it asks, "Am I a citizen yes. or not?" And I'm in yes. Mac. Yes. Um, this is you. If you're if you're a citizen or a foreigner, then you can apply. If you're not a citizen, then you can't apply. If you're not a citizen, then you can't apply. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Now, if I needed to add another owner, at this time I said I was 100%, but if I needed to add another owner or two or three or four, I would just hit this add other owner. And her social security number, date of birth, and place of birth. She's a citizen, address. We're just going to put an address in there. And you'll now see that everything is done. Now, if I want to remove her, I could remove her. But right now, the whole company is 100% owned. We're going to move on to the next. Okay, the final additional information is all information that you need to answer. Um, that has to do with, and you want to say no on all of these, and hopefully you're truthful. Mm -hmm. You also then want to go to the next section. If anyone helped you, um, or whether you paid a fee for this service, you must disclose the, the person who paid you, the company you're from, their phone number, street address, and how much they charged you. Okay, and then if somebody did and you want to give them permission to talk to the SBA, you can mark yes. And if you don't want them to talk to the SBA and you want to talk to them, you can mark no. Now, with the um, idle loan now, you can do now the idle advance. So right now we've done the, per the regular idle loan. This allows us to do the advance. If we'd like to consider up to $10,000 for an advance, with 10 employees, we would most likely be able to get the $10,000. Something less than 10 employees, you'd be able to get some kind of variation. Now, the idle, go ahead. Uh, this is um, now, this is an advance against the final loan you get in the IDLE program. So, say if you got rewarded $500,000, they would give you four hundred ninety dollars at closing because you had an advance of $10,000. Um, 那么这一万美金, 高达一万美金就会是你这个最后整个的这个贷款总额的一部分, 最后都是要还的. 
So once you, so this advance, now the only time this advance comes a grant is if you put in an application for a loan, you get an advance up to $10,000 and they your decline your loan. Yeah. Yeah. And if they decline your loan, then whatever they advance you becomes a gift. Right. Okay. All right, once this is all done, you put your bank account number, your account number and routing number so they know where to send the money, both the loan and the advance. And for our purposes, Yes,就是我想提醒一下大家,现在因为网站上有很多其他各种各样的假的一些来盗取你的个人信息,所以这种情况下呢,我建议大家一定要直接在你们的地址框里面输入SBA.gov,然后呢,直接找的这个链接,